Okay. Okay, guys, I'm here with my review of the 1990 Survivor Series. Uh, the fourth video of my Survivor Series review series. Um, this is a very unique Survivor Series because, for starters, it was all built up around an egg that we all know hatched into probably one of the stupidest things in existence. But I will get to that later. Uh, this is, of course, on Thanksgiving Eve again in 1990. We have six matches that are Survivor Series matches. And a match that's very unique that they never did again. And probably because the match that had out of it wasn't good. Uh, we're from the Providence Civic Center in Providence, Rhode Island. I believe the only time Survivor Series has been in Rhode Island. Um, so, I know that... Providence has hosted both the Royal Rumble and a Survivor Series. I don't think it's ever gotten a SummerSlam or a WrestleMania yet. So, uh, so take a look at the first match. It's the Warriors versus the Perfect Team. The Warriors are WAF champion, the Ultimate Warrior, teaming with the Intercontinental champion at the time, the Texas Tornado, and the Legion of Doom, and they are taking on Mr. Perfect and his perfect team of himself and Demolition. Uh, Axe is the first guy eliminated, and then Smash, Crush, and the Legion of Doom, they all get the squad like they're fighting in the ring. Uh, leaves Perfect against both the Tornado and Warrior. Perfect manages to eliminate the Tornado. And then it comes down to Warrior and Perfect. And Warrior beats Perfect and is the sole survivor. And he moves on to the very special grand finale match of survival. Which was basically all the winners of these Survivor Series matches would form two teams for... I really don't know, was it? it didn't prove anything in my opinion. So, Warrior over there. Then we have our second match. It's the Dream Team. Really creative Dusty Rhodes for two years. As it's Dusty Rhodes captaining the team of Coco Beware and the Heart Foundation. And they're taking on the Million Dollar Team, which was the Million Dollar Man, Ted DiBiase, Rhythm and Blues, who, for a lot of people who may not know, were Greg Valentine and the Honky Tonk Man. And they had a mystery partner that ended up becoming probably the most iconic face in the WWE as their mystery partner who debuted on that night was The Undertaker. And Taker starts immediately off by eliminating Coco Beware. Uh, then the Hoynaut Man gets eliminated. Undertaker eliminates uh, Jim Neidhart and Dusty Rhodes. Then Undertaker is counted out. Bret Hart eliminates Greg Valentine. Although I will say that Undertaker was not technically legal in the ring when he got counted out. But... WWE logic sometimes even persisted back in these older shows. Um, and then Bret Hart and DiBiase have an actually really interesting little match uh, with DiBiase winning. Uh, one and a half stars, other match also one and a half stars. And since there's six matches on this show, total star ranking will be 30. Then we get our next match. It's the Vipers versus the Visionaries. So, right now, the grand finale, you mind, you have Warrior and you got DBI. So, then it's the Vipers, which is Captain Jake the Snake Roberts, Jimmy Snook and the Rockers versus the Visionaries. Captain Rick the Model Martell, the Warlord and the Powers and Glory, which is Hercules and Paul Roma. Not much of a match here. Uh, in fact, this is the first time an entire team actually survived in which the Visionaries score a clean sweep and don't lose anyone. So, they go into the grand finale match of survival. And half a star. Half a star. So, it's five on one at this point. I believe that's what I said. It's 
is DiBiase, Martel, Warlord, and Power and Glory versus Just a Warrior. That changed in the next match. The Hulkamaniacs, another creative name by a team captain who obviously doesn't know how to name his team anything else, uh, as it has its Hulk Hogan versus the YouTube vid. Huh? The YouTube vid. Oh. That's my mom. Uh, That's you! I know. You're interrupting me. Huh? You're interrupting me. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. That's my mom. I don't know how to pause recording for stuff like this. Uh, but it's the Hulkamaniacs versus the Natural Disasters. The Hulkamaniacs are captained by Hulk Hogan as he teams with Hacksaw Jim Duggan, the Big Boss Man, and Tugboat, who would later become Typhoon, but that's entirely different. And they're doing on Natural Disasters, which are... The team captained by the Canadian Earthquake, Earthquake, team of Dino, Bravo, Haku, and the Barbarian. So, the Natural Disasters suffer the first elimination when Haku's eliminated. Then the Hulkamaniacs suffer elimination when the Boss Man's eliminated. Hacksaw Jim Doug, uh, then Dino Bravo is eliminated. Duggan is disqualified because he beats Earthquake with the 2x4. Uh, that leaves Hogan and Tugboat against the Earthquake and the Barbarian. Earthquake and Tugboat get counted out. Hogan drops the leg on the Barbarian, gets the win. This is probably the best match out of the bunch, so it's a two-star match. Next match is the Alliance, which is odd that it was here, because I didn't at all, because this match didn't deserve to be here. But anyway... It's the Alliance. Nikolai Volkov captaining the team of himself, Tito Santana and the Bushwhackers versus the Mercenaries, which is captained by Sergeant Slaughter, and his team members are Boris Zukov and the Orient Express. Uh, needless to say that the Alliance gets it four on one in oh, maybe minute and a half, two minutes when they eliminate Borzukov and the Orient Express. And then Slaughter cuts it to, uh, one on one, but gets disqualified when General Adnan hits, uh, um, Tito Santana with the Iraqi flag, which referee saw when Slaughter thought he didn't. And that sets up the grand finale match of survival. It's finalized as on one side, as it's a five on three eight man tag match. As on one side, it's, it's, the, it's Hulk Hogan, the Ultimate Warrior, and Tito Santana. And they'll be taking on the Million Dollar Man, Ted DiBiase, and the entire Visionary team. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to talk about the one thing that this match was, that this whole event was centered around, and for weeks they had built up what was going to hatch out of this big, gigantic egg that they brought with them to the Providence Civic Center. Okay, and what hatched out of it is quite frankly the most ridiculous thing I think I've ever seen in wrestling, and that's saying something since I've seen a, uh, since I've now seen a wrestling bull and a leprechaun dressed as an alligator. This still is a tad bit more ridiculous than that, as it was the gobbly gooker hatched out of the egg. The Obli Gooker, for a lot of people who may not know, was Hector Guerrero dressed in a chicken suit. I'm only talking about this because it takes up so much time because they needed time to fill before they hit the grand finale match of survival. And this is really the dumbest thing I think I've ever seen at Survivor Series. So I'm not rating it because it's not getting a ma it's not getting anything because this is really just a pointless waste of time. So that brings us to the main event of the show. Like I said, this weird eight-man tag: Hogan, Warrior, and Santana versus Teddy Biasi and the Visionaries. And War is eliminated in about a minute. Then Tito Santana is eliminated. Then War and Hogan basically run the table. I'm like. I thought to myself thinking as I was watching this again, well, if you just basically wanted Warrior and Hogan to destroy five guys, why didn't you just, just have them win and put Slaughter on the other team and it would be six on two? Because then you could argue that Hogan and Warrior were the two most dominant forces in the WWE at that time because they wiped six guys out. 
Uh, this match isn't anything. It's one. It's at best a half star. So that's that. Um, the next, of course, thing that I'm going to be doing is the 1991 Survivor Series, which was the very first time the WWF Championship was defended at Survivor Series, which would become a tradition for almost every other Survivor Series minus 1993 to follow 91. So, stay tuned for that. Uh, if you like the video, hit the like button down there. Uh, hit the subscribe button down there. And thanks for watching. Bye. And the rating for this will be in the description box. Bye.